Hey guys, next week the next generation of galaxies are coming out, but before they come out, let's take a step back to look back at the Galaxy S10. Starting with the design, she is hot. The bezels are close to non-existent and the gently curved edges are stunning. Without a doubt, the 6.4 inch AMOLED display is simply the best on the market. Its vibrant colors are striking, making anything pop and the screen itself is very bright, allowing it to be one of the most usable phones outdoors. One thing this stellar display is missing is a high refresh display, however, I feel that altogether this display is just so great that we can overlook this one downfall. In the hands, it feels sleek and nice to hold. It's not the grippiest phone due to the large size, but the S10, which is the smaller variant, easily fixes this issue. Uh, another slight problem would be its aluminum frame. This is not the worst thing in the world, but aluminum isn't as sturdy and premium like something like stainless steel, which Apple has been using for three generations now. To keep up with the game, I really think that Samsung needs to upgrade to stainless steel on its next generation of galaxies. Flipping the phone over, it has a glass back. It looks nice when you first take it out of the box, but this is probably the only moment it will look nice because the glass last back is a fingerprint magnet. You could try to clean it, but it gets dirty faster than you can clean it and it's just not worth it. Another thing is that glass is glass and glass cracks, so glass isn't exactly the most durable material to use. On the back we also have three cameras, a telephoto, a wide, and an ultra wide, which allows for greater flexibility to zoom in and out while shooting. They're great cameras and produce wonderful pictures, I wouldn't say they're the best cameras on smartphones, but they come pretty dang close. Moving to the front we have the hole punch. The hole punch is definitely superior to the notch, but I feel like Samsung could have easily utilized a motorized selfie camera to completely eliminate the bezels. Another complaint I have is the two selfie cameras on the Galaxy S10 Plus. It just seems a bit excessive. If it was something like a wider lens, I would be fine even though I rarely take selfies and I probably wouldn't even use it. But the second camera on the Galaxy S10 Plus is for the bokeh effect, which the S10 and S10e are capable of without the second camera. This makes me think that Samsung added in a second camera in their most expensive phone to make it seem more premium. The software itself is surprisingly well polished for a Samsung phone and is one of the reasons the phone is so smooth compared to previous generations. I feel like Samsung has perfected one UI to the best of its abilities but I still use the Pixel Launcher APK because I prefer a stock Android launcher. It's just a personal preference. Now let's get to its performance. The combination of a Snapdragon 855 and 8GB of RAM results in a pretty snappy phone. It's as fast as a phone can get and stands out when there are a lot of apps in the background. I no longer have apps crashing on me because I have too many apps open in the background. Honestly, I feel like this phone is faster than an iPhone, which is usually the speed king. It just feels so much more snappy, especially when all the animations are eliminated. More importantly, the S10's performance holds up during high performance activities such as gaming. My last phone, the S8, had severe lag and overheating issues while playing PUBG, but this phone completely solves this issue. One explanation for this jump in performance is that Samsung was able to fit a vapor cooling chamber in the phone to fix the overheating issue. Because this issue was eliminated, the battery life is much improved. This along with the other software and the hardware improvements along with the much bigger 4000 mAh battery ensures that the battery will last the whole day with some extra left remaining at the end of the day and is pretty dang good. Like any other Samsung phone, this phone comes with its assortment of quirky features but this year's quirky features are actually practical. First off, the under display fingerprint sensor is a game changer for bezel-less phones. We've been waiting for this feature ever since the S8 came out but the tech was just not not developed enough to be placed in a working product. In the meantime, many manufacturers shifted to other biometric systems like facial recognition, but no matter how advanced their technology was, nothing seemed to be as practical as a fingerprint sensor. Now, there is lag associated with the S10's fingerprint sensor, but I still prefer it more than something like Face ID. Another feature is the reversible wireless charging. At first glance, it seems like a gimmick, but this is actually a life-changing feature. It's most practical to use to power up accessories like your Galaxy Buds or watch. Now, when I go on trips, I no longer have to bring a separate cable just to power up my accessories. Another useful situation is when your friend's phones are dying and they desperately need to keep their phones on. For example, the other day my friend Nathan had to go home with an Uber but was on his last percents. He was only able to call out Uber because of my phone. And lastly but not least importantly, the Galaxy S10 Plus is also one of the last phones with a headphone jack. To round this off, I think that the Galaxy S10 is a great phone and it will likely continue being my daily driver for the next couple years. While writing this review, I realized something. I realized that the S10 represents a decade of the Galaxy line and how far it has come. The company that once blatantly copied Apple has become a worthwhile competitor and an innovator itself. And yes, the Galaxy S10 has its problems but nothing can be perfect and that's why smartphone makers have to make a new phone every single year. Looking forward to the rumored S20 coming out this week, 
I know that Samsung will be able to fix all the problems I addressed this week and I'm excited to see what Samsung has to offer on its next generation of galaxies.